So now to conclude our look at the hormonal regulation of digestion, we've looked at what happens in the oral cavity and what happens in the stomach. All of these things that are happening here, again, remember, are triggered by the arrival of food initially, causing these subsequent reactions like peristalsis and chemical digestion secretions. Now, the next part, the next compartment of this uh, alimentary canal we want to focus on uh, are the small intestines. And this is a major, major part of digestion, and thus it's majorly regulated. Small intestines are going to have a uh, compound, a mixture known as chyme, enter it. So chyme is basically the way that food looks and is composed of right now. So chyme, if we remember from digestion, is simply going to be a very acidic mixture. Why is it acidic? Well, that's because it's mixing with these gastric juices and HCl, so it's a pH of 2, very acidic mixture of partially digested food. So remember, the stomach doesn't do all the digestion. It does some digestion. So the food itself at this stage will be partially digested in the form of chyme. So chyme arrives to the small intestine, but specifically within the chyme, there's going to be amino acids and fatty acids, two uh, subcomponents of food that are within it, within the chyme. The amino acids and fatty acids are going to trigger something. Within it will trigger the release of digestive hormones, the release of digestive hormones, and that's specifically going to be by a very important part of the small intestine, the duodenum. So, duodenum. Okay. So the amino acids and fatty acids within chyme trigger the release of digestive hormones by the duodenum. Okay, let's take a look at what these digestive hormones really are all about. So we'll write that down here. Digestive hormones. Big deal. What does that mean? How does that relate to our overall hormonal regulation? So the two digestive hormones in question uh, right now are going to be CCK, again, released by the duodenum, the small intestine. This is also known as cholecystokonin, CCK for that reason. The function of this is the following. Once CCK has been released, it subsequently stimulates the release of digestive enzymes from the pancreas. So the pancreas, remember, plays a big role in sending stuff to the small intestine via ducts. And the reason why it does that is because CCK tells it to do that. Stimulates release of digestive enzymes from the pancreas and also CCK as a hormone, digestive hormone, has an influence on the release of bile from the structure it comes from, which is the gallbladder. So big important roles for this chemical messenger CCK. In addition, the other digestive hormone in question that's of focus is known as secretin. Secretin stimulates the pancreas as well, but it does something different here. It stimulates the pancreas, which is very intimately related to the small intestine, to secrete a compound we've heard of known as HCO3- bicarbonate, in other words. Remember, bicarbonate is very basic. Chyme, I told you on the onset, is an acidic mixture. So what does HCO plus HCO3 plus an acidic mixture give you? It gives you a neutral compound, so what we're a neutral mixture. So what we're trying to do with HCO3 is uh, the following. It utilizes its basicity to neutralize the chyme acidity. Acidity, better way to say that. Acidity. So HCO3 mixes with the very acidic chyme to give you a more neutral compound, a neutral mixture of partially digested and, future, and mostly digested food once it's at the small intestine point. Now, final point about the small intestine and hormonal regulation is the following. And it's a little bit, it's somewhat relevant, I should say. Um, if chyme is with lots of fats, okay, lots of fats are being consumed by the individual. This actually causes a direct influence on these digestive hormones. The influence is the following. It increases them a lot. It increases secretin. If there's lots of fats, lots of fatty acids within this chyme mixture, it increases the amount of secretin that's made and secreted and also the amount of CCK made and secreted by the pancreas. So now, both of these structures, 
directly are going to also act on the stomach. So it's not necessarily going to be limited to the small intestine. It, it acts on the stomach inhibit, uh, in, in an inhibitory way in the following manner. At the stomach, now at the small intestine, it's doing its job by doing the following events. But at the stomach, it actually inhibits peristalsis. It tells peristalsis to calm down and also inhibits the production of gastric juices. So this seems very weird and counterintuitive. But the reason why is because what you want to do when you have lots of fats, fats are harder to break down. Remember, they're in these large globules, and we need to put bile on them. We need to emulsify them, break them down to smaller components mechanically, and then chemically get to them with the lipases. This is a long process. This takes time. So what we do is we slow down digestion everywhere else except for this area. So this is what we're doing. We're inhibiting peristalsis and gastric juices. We're basically siphoning our resources and focusing them all at this structure of the small intestine to make sure that the fats that are lots of them within this chyme are definitely broken down successfully and completely. So overall, this process of having lots of fats and having lots of secretin and CCK slows down the digestion of material overall. Slows down the digestion uh, digestion of material to break down. Slows down digestion of material to break down. So whatever needs to be broken down takes a long time once you eat lots of fats. This is kind of the reason why, for many other per reasons as well, that you feel very lethargic after a very fatty, heavy meal. Right? We feel very, very lethargic and lazy. Kind of the reasoning why uh, behind this is this increase in secretin and increase in CCK overall acting on the stomach and slowing down all of the other digestive processes to make sure that the fats are successfully and completely digested. So that covers our look at the hormonal uh, regulation of digestion. Take a look at figure 41.2 to really drive home all of these points.